Well, hello, everybody. In the process of me hanging my door back up, I didn't have a good hold on it. So what happened was the door fell over on my lamp on the other side of the room, and it hit it. It knocked a big gaping hole in it, which I took the pieces and I glued it back together so I would have a, found, a sound foundation to cover the, the lamp shade to make it look like new. So what I've done, <clears throat> this is an old antique lamp, and you can't find a shade to fit it. It's a 12-inch high lamp shade, and most of them in the store are only 10, which you can see I replaced the lamp shade right there. But it's only a 10 inch lampshade. It doesn't look right. It looks too small. So I've got to take that lampshade back. And I bought this roll of burlap. The only thing is it's got lace down the center. And I didn't want the lace on it. And it's 18 inches wide, 10 foot long. So I got plenty of fabric. But I didn't want this, so I loosened it at one end, and I just pulled it off. I can use that on something else. But what I did was trace me a pattern. <coughs> and I'm sorry about that, y'all. Everything I do is either jammed up in the kitchen or somewhere else in the house. So what I'm going to do is cut me another piece because I've got two lamps and I want both of them to match. The other one, the shade is okay. It's just old. But I said if I'm going to replace one of the shades, I'm going to do both of them so I still have a matching pair of lamps. Now what I did to get this pattern was I took my lampshade and I laid it down and I started marking, let's see where my marker is, with my marker all along here. all along here and I left about an inch maybe not quite an inch but I marked it and I started rolling it and as I rolled it I marked it all along here and if you'll do that all the way to the end and it's a little bit out of whack because I just cut this piece and had stretched it on the lamp. But that's all I did was roll it until I got to that mark again that showed that I went completely around my lampshade. And now what I'm gonna do is cut my second piece. And I'm leaving about an inch at the top and the bottom, maybe not quite an inch because I want room to bend it over, either hem it up or bend it over and glue it down to the shade. Hopefully I won't have any seams except the one where it, that's joining the back. But that little old shade right there that's on that lamp that's too small and I knew it was too small, but I bought it anyway, and I said, well, I'll just see how it looks, because I couldn't find any that were 12 inches. But you can see it's really too small for that kind of lamp. It's really too modern for that lamp, the color. And this burlap color would work best, because everything in my, bed, my living room is gold, green, brown, so this brown burlap is going to go great. 
minus the lace. And it was real easy to pull off. And you know, there may come another project that I can use that piece of lace for, so it's not gonna to be totally lost. And it's just lightly glued on. So that'll give me two new lampshades for my lamps, which will give it a whole new look for my lamps. Oh wait, I just stuck my finger on the pin. And I am gluing, I mean, pinning these down because it's not completely straight. It's kind of circular. Since the top of the shade is a little smaller than the bottom, it goes around in a circular motion, but then it moves. It kind of climbs. And you'll see what I'm talking about whenever you lay your fabric down on your lamp or your lamp on your fabric, and you try to uh, measure it off. And since that one's already been measured, I'm gonna go ahead and cut this one to to match this one because these shades are exactly alike and I'm making a mess I mean my house stays a mess because like my son said it's a construction zone <laughs> if I'm not fixing the floors I'm doing something else in the house to fix something And that roll of burlap was only like 688 for a 10 foot roll of it, even though it had the lace on it. But I looked at it and I figured, well, that lace will be easy enough, I think, to take off, because I really don't want the lace on it. But you know, some crafts, you may want that lace on it. Because that's 10 foot of lace right there, wide lace. I'm just going to roll it up on here, get it out of my way, because that's, that's going to give me my two lamps right there, my two lamp shades. But yeah, if you <laughs> bust a lamp like I did, I mean, it didn't hurt anything but the shade. <clears throat> the door, the corner of the door caught the shade and just knocked a hole in the shade, pull the a wire brace out of the bottom of it, and I was just before throwing it away. Because I didn't think I'd have any use for it. And then I got to thinking, I said, you know what? I've seen people recover lampshades. So why can't I recover my lampshade? So that's what we're doing. If I can get it cut without it destroying everything here. See, once you get the first one cut, all you gotta do is mirror it to the other one and cut you another one. And that's gonna give me my set of shade, my lamps back because they'll both have matching covers or lampshades. And I think it's going to look good.
but that's a lot better than settling for a shade that's too small and not really the color you want. Because these are old antique lamps. I got them at a yard sale. Or well, not a yard sale, it was an estate sale. And I just love the old, older uh, pattern, the older styles. And I've had them for many years already. Now what I'm gonna do is I've gotta put it back on the shade. Just one of them, I don't need both. Because I do have to measure how big the seam is gonna be. And as you can see, I left a good, good inch or so Because what I'm going to do is hem it on the sewing machine. Just sewing that seam together. I think it's going to turn out really good. And you need to pull it a little snug, not real tight. But you want it to fit on your lampshade pretty snug. See what I'm talking about? Don't you think that's going to look good? That's going to look like a brand new lampshade when I get done. Take it off of the shade. Take it over here to the sewing machine. I already brought my sewing machine out here. <laughs> Tried to get it set up, y'all. I'm making a mess in my kitchen. It's going to have to be cleaned up when I get through, that's for sure. wanted to even that out a little bit.
hoping I'm getting it tight enough. I may have to going to put it on there for the fit because I may have to take it up a little bit more. I don't know. Like I said, I don't want it tight, but I don't want it real loose either. I want it to fit my shade. Thanks, that it's just about going to have it. be just a little bit did I do it there <laughs> I didn't make very straight a seam so I'm just going to correct that because that won't look right once I get my shade on there. Yeah. yeah, I didn't make a complete straight line here, so we got to had to correct that a little bit. A little bit of situation. Other thing I wanted to do, let me go get my seam ripper because I need to take a few threads out. I'm just taking these outer threads out. And that was just the area that I didn't get straight. 
and I'll show you in a minute why I'm doing that. I want a perfectly straight seam. If I'd have marked it a little bit better, I wouldn't have ended up doing that. But oh well. <laughs> the story of my life. I think I'm going to like my shades better with this on it than I did just the green. <laughs> I mean, I liked them with the green, but because they matched most of what was in the living room all with the green. But I think I'm going to like them even better with this on there. Be careful not to cut your burlap. <laughs> I'll try to be close, you know, more careful doing my second one so I don't have to do this. Because if you don't have it straight, and you go back over and sew it and make it straight, you're going to have an extra seam. And if you leave it like that, it's not going to allow your uh, fabric to lay straight when you turn it. Now, I was gonna, what I'm going to do, I think I'm going to do, is make a uh, blue jean seam. I know you've seen those. <laughs> Everybody's had blue jeans. How you have a seam that's actually on the outside. Here, let me pin it up here so you can see it better. I just don't have a good area in my house to and really since there's no right and wrong to this fabric And you really don't even have to do this if you don't want to. You can just leave the seam the way it is. But this is so you can go back on the outside. Sew your stitching down. And have what I call a blue jean seam. You do need your pins for this. <laughs> Just 
just be careful you don't pin all your seams together, I mean your fabric with your with your bottom piece. You don't want it, you know, stuck together or sewed together. <laughs> Guess you can see what I'm doing here. I'm just pinning it down so I can sew it. It'll just give it a little bit more of a finished look. And you can make that seam as wide or as narrow as you want. I'm leaving it a little wide and that's not gonna hurt.
Now I'm just going to top stitch it. And hope I get my seam straight <laughs> to make it look like how your blue jeans are sewn. Just make sure you don't sew your bottom lip layer to it. back down because you got to have a double so seam on each side because you know that's the way your blue jeans are and it doesn't show up that much not on fabric like this but I'm going slow because I don't want to break a needle on a pin. side of the seam. And do the same thing. Put a double stitching down that whole way, the whole seam. This time I'm going on the outside. Now I'm putting the second seam on the other side. And I can go ahead and take these needles out or pins out because I don't really need them.
Okay, where's my scissors? <laughs> Now I'm just going to take the pins out. Now, you can decide what you want, whether you want it on the outside or the inside. I think I'm going to put it I got the double stitching, but I'm going to turn it to the inside, I think. I think it'll look better on this to do it that way. You know what, I think I'm going to put my seam to the section where I had all the damage to the shade. So that seam will kind of help cover all that up. It'll be in the back. And one reason I left it kind of wide is because of the way this type of uh, fabric, this burlap will, sh you know, it kind of uh, frays. Now what I'm going to do is just fold it over and I'm going to glue this right onto this shade because it's so old. I, I think it will hold up better that way if I do it. I really needed to sew the edge of this before I tried this. but. And I'm using clothes hangers as pins. 
to hold it in place. And I've got tacky glue that I'm going to be gluing it with. Because it dries a lot faster. Trying to get it here so you can see it. All of these little ends are not helping. And you will get glue on your hands, that's for sure. No way around that good little thing. And it would have been a lot better to sew the end of this, and I didn't do that. That would have kept it from fraying so much. Yeah, it would help if you'd stitch the edge of your fabric to keep it from fraying that I didn't do. It would help tremendously to do that. It's just going to be a little bit more work if you don't. if I put my clips on there, they're, they're going to stick. <laughs> but that's the good thing about tacky glue. You don't have to hold it as long before you can go on to the next section. You just have to work a little bit more to get all those frayed edges under there. So the glue will hold them down. But you can do it. you 
to roll. Well, I'm trying to get the best angle for this, but the light is not cooperating. Maybe here. Yeah, since I had to glue the wire back in it, I decided to go ahead and just glue the cover right to the shade, the base of it. And I hope you can see what I'm doing. <laughs> oh, a lot of time for your nose to itch when you got your hands full of glue. Just be prepared to get glue on your hands. <laughs> And just roll it over and stick it on your glue, just like you would have if you'd have hemmed it up. have anything to trim up later. You can always trim it up after your glue dries.
kind of messy, but you can get it done. And like I said, you can make a, a cover for it that you can remove. Just don't glue it to the original shade. But like I said, in this case, this one is so old and brittle, I think it will do better if I just put it on the shade itself. And if I ever have to cover it again or do anything to it, I may have to make a base of a frame to go, for it to go on. And, you know, I was getting ready to throw this away anyway. So if I can salvage my shade and keep it in the style that it was, why not? If it turns out good, it turns out good. And if it don't, then throw it away then. But at least I've tried. But I think it's going to turn out good. I really do. a little bit of effort just try to keep your seam that you're gluing at the bottom the, the same width have it made. And see all of those frayed edges I just turned underneath. So it's going to make a clean it's making a clean hem. I'm going to be proud of this. I mean, I like it already. The glue is a little messy. <laughs> might take you a little bit to get it off your fingers after you get through because it's going to dry on your fingers. It's like it dried to everything else. I didn't end up using those clamp, those close pins for clamps, because I think they would have just stuck to the glue.
and you can see that broken part on the inside of the shade, but you're not going to be able to see it on the outside. Don't you think that's looking good? Well, if I could get this thing from rolling, and get it in the right light. I need to cut that. I shouldn't have pulled it. want to stick to my fingers so bad because I got all that glue on them.
And when it dries, if you need to go back and touch up a little bit more glue, you can always do that. You can go back around it as it's drying and just apply a little bit of pressure to kind of secure it back down. Because some of it will pop up as you go around it. But if you'll go back around it and just apply a little bit of pressure, it'll secure it back down. That's the good thing about tacky glue. And it gets a little tricky around that seam because it is a little bit thicker than some of the rest of it. But just work it in. <laughs>
I am by no means a professional at this. <laughs> And a lot of you could probably do a better job than me. I've just got so much glue on my fingers. have to hold the glue down just a little bit. Then ideal to put a clamp on it, but I'm afraid with this material the the clamp would have just glued to the glue. <laughs> getting out of camera view here again, and I didn't mean to. But when you get so much glue on your fingers, you, <laughs> you're sticking to the shade. It gets kind of tricky. Everything's sticking to my fingers. Hope nobody ever looks under my lampshade. <laughs> Not such a pretty sight underneath it. This is like playing in sticky Play-Doh, gluey Play-Doh.
Thank goodness all this dries clear. I'm paying close attention to this seam right here because it's a little thicker than the rest of it. And I want to make sure that it's, it's held down and secure. Let me see if I can get some of this glue off my fingers. Use my scrub pad, that might get some of it off. I didn't think y'all might want to see that. I just got my scrub pad and I'm going to basically scrub the glue that's on my fingers off because it's still kind of soft it's not completely dry under my fingernails. <laughs> Sorry about that, I'm trying to move the get this glue here before it dries completely. The ideal thing is to put down paper or something on your work area. Uh. But, there you go. There's my lampshade. And see, there is the double seam back here. 
that's on the back of it. But I think that turned out pretty good. And I may have to go back over with some glue. Like I said, though, if I go around it and apply a little bit of pressure to the glue since it's almost set, not completely dry, it'll hold a little better just from doing that. And I'm going to go ahead and do, apply a little bit more pressure to the back since it's almost dried. And I know that's not perfectly straight, but hey, this is the first shade I've ever done this to. And if I'd have hemmed it on the machine, Before I did this, it probably would have looked better. But you know what? It's straight enough for me. Things don't have to be 100% perfect. go ahead and put my shade on see how it looks over here man that cat <laughs> is metal. <laughs> the shade, I mean, the, it's wrought iron or bronze. I don't know what they call it. And I'm going to put the bad spot to the back, which I don't think you're going to see it anyway. And when that dries, what I can do is take strips of the burlap some of these strips that were cut and what I can do is make like a binding and glue it right around the top right around this top edge I think that looks pretty good, y'all. What do y'all think? 688 for that whole 10 foot roll of burlap, and I'm getting two lamps covered out of it. I think that's pretty good. Now, if my next one look, looks half as good as this, but I want that glue to dry before I put any more around it. But like I said, I might take this these pieces that I have left, cut strips, and go around the top edge as a border so it doesn't look so raggedy. But there you go. There is my burlap lampshade, and I think that looks pretty good. I mean, this shade was pretty, but see the difference in the height? I think the burlap looks and this look has a burlap look, only it's a gray and white, where that is a brown and, or tan. So I'm proud of that.
Now, I'm going to go ahead and get busy and do my next one. Go ahead and get both of it done so I can be done for the night. And I may even go around this one and sew the end of it. But I think that shade turned out pretty darn good. I really do. I like that. Minus the lace, because I don't like the lace that was on it. So, y'all, there's my lampshade. There's my lampshade. How do you like it? I think that turned out pretty good. Even if my house is all messed up. <laughs> I need to clean house is what I need to do. But I've got so many projects going on, I'm busy doing my projects, and I don't have time to clean the house, which it's not that bad, but everything is just in the kitchen is what it is. So, with that, I'm gonna say please, thanks first of all for hanging out with me and watching me go through this. Cause like I said, I've never done a lampshade before and I think that turned out pretty good. It was better than throwing it away, and now I don't have to spend $27 on a lampshade that's too short. So, like I said, thanks for hanging out with me, loving each and every one of you. Please like, share, and subscribe to my videos if you haven't already. Y'all have a blessed evening, and I will see y'all my next one. Bye now.